Alright, so this is the Mixtile Blade 3. I know very little about this product. I know just about as much that it's on the product page. But I mean, they advertise it as, as whatever you want it to be. Um, video encoding, some AI stuff, clearly as like a server. Because I'm interested in the, the clustering aspect of it. The fact that they can connect to each other and you can make your own sort of blade cluster. I'm gonna, you know, just go with the flow, see where it takes me on what I should build with it. I like the little keycap. Four pin right there, right next to the ethernet. And it should slide in like this. Oh no, so I'm supposed to take this heatsink off. I was wondering, I was like, man, how does it fit in here with this heatsink? It seems too bulky. Okay, now this works. So I could probably just put these same screws back in here power button is like flush. I thought it was going to stick out, but it's like flush to the case. So there's Raspberry Pi 4, Orange Pi 5, and then the Blade 3. This side, like that. But the case should just be a big heat sink. Alright, now to figure out what this thing can do and then figure out what I want to do with it. All right, so now that we have the Blade 3 unboxed, let's go over the hardware really quick. All right, so first up, the CPU. The Blade 3 is rocking the OctaCore Rockchip RK3588, the same chip that's in the Orange Pi 5, as well as a bunch of other single board computers as well. Not to downplay it at all, it is widely used because it is a really good chip. You can get up to 32 gigs of RAM. The board also packs in a little NPU, a neural processing unit that's capable of doing some AI functionality. And you're also able to expand the storage, of course, and for even more potential add-ons, it has a mini PCIe socket as well. Now for the external front panel I.O. The Blade 3 is rocking two USB Type-C connectors, both 3.2 Gen 1, and both support DisplayPort 1.4. And apparently you're able to achieve triple monitor setups with this thing by the HDMI, of course, and then both USB Type-C connectors act as the other display ports. The HDMI output offers HDMI 2.1 with 8K 60fps and 4K 120fps. The HDMI input offers HDMI 2.0 and allows for capturing 4K video at 60fps. All right, so let's head over to Ethernet because this is where the Blade 3 really shines. The Blade 3 has two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports. That is something not a lot of single board computers have. You'd be lucky if your single board computer had one 2.5 gigabit Ethernet interface. And for power, all it needs is 12 volts. Let's get some software on it and see if we can push it to its limits. So for software, I decided to ditch that idea of going with the firewall. That idea just seemed kind of boring. So I decided to go with the angle of just me setting up my very first server for the very first time. What software would I put on it to maximize the potential of the Blade 3? This Blade 3 came with Ubuntu installed, which is perfect for installing Docker applications like Portainer. If you don't know what Docker is, think of Docker as a platform that allows you to package software and its dependencies into containers. These containers are lightweight standalone units that can run on any system that supports Docker and most do. And Portainer is a streamlined, simple way to get into Docker by giving you a nice GUI to work with instead of jumping right into the command line. Now let's try and give it a full server workload and see how far we can push it. All right, so let me show you my software stack here. I've got my Blade 3 on this IP and I've got Portainer running on port 900. Here is my environment that I created here for testing. So we click on that environment and we click on our containers. So these are our containers. We've got fresh RSS, which is our self-hosted RSS feed. And then we have Heimdall, which is our front end that we're gonna use to kind of manage everything and make it look pretty. Okay, so let's see if we can do, instead of emulating a game, let's see if we can run an entire Minecraft server on this thing. I have no idea how resource intensive this is. I know that people have hosted Minecraft servers on like Raspberry Pis and stuff. But I have no idea like what what to expect. I've, I've literally never played the game, so so it loads, and then you go to multiplayer, add server, Blade Three, and then I'm gonna pick the IP and port of this little Blade Three, and the port is two five five six five. Done. Boom. So now we have our Blade Three Minecraft server. But I mean, it's playing smooth. Looks like it's running nicely in that little container. All right, so I'm gonna mark this as a success and we're gonna go over to the stress test and kind of see if the Blade 3 can kind of handle everything at once. So this is while we're encoding a 1080p video. So we're watching a 1080p video off of our Jellyfin server. 
well, our jellyfin container within the blade three. And here is our Minecraft server hosting me running around here. And man, we're not even using that much RAM. Okay, so if you know me, you know I couldn't just let the Blade 3 sit there mocking me about how little I pushed it in the first test. So I had to crank it up a little bit more. So here is me on the back patio, just over Wi-Fi, doing multiple encodes of different videos that are stored on the Jellyfin server while also running the Minecraft server. I just wanna see it sweat a little bit more before I'm done testing. If 2.5 gigabit ethernet or having a second ethernet port for using advanced network applications isn't important for you, then maybe don't go with the Blade 3. If you want something well-built, reliable, and familiar, give the Blade 3 a look. I'll put some links in the description. If you want to try something a little bit more simple, check out this video. Peace.